First of all, MasterCard and Visa. Visa uses first combination of four. You can easily tell that if you look at a credit card. MasterCard is usually five. Now, if theoretically, this is going to be all theoretically, so I don't have to take a Fifth Amendment every time I talk to you guys. Theoretically, if you were to rip off a credit card, first of all, you need 16 digits. The first four are most important. Then, if you pick up all 16 of them, you're still not even there yet. Second of all, you need a personal identification number, which are three to four digits behind the credit card. They're right behind the account number. At that point, you have two important things. Everything else, except for the expiration date, you can pull off through the net or through your own research. Let's begin off. Okay. You have the person's individual name. Usually it's through mailing address. Sometimes they'll get smart and they'll put their middle initial through there. Second of all, 16 digit combination number, which is credit card. Most credit card companies these days are not that smart and they won't put the picture on there. It doesn't make a big deal anyway. Third thing is the expiration date. That's very important. The personal identification number that's back in the card only works if you want to get money. Now I'll give you an example. For Western Union, you can get up to about $900 in free cash using a credit card if you do it correctly. The catch is is that you need a personal identification number. Now this is not through a carbon copy. This is not something that you can basically get by go trashing or going through Mervyn's or Macy's. This is something that has to be up close and personal and you need to see the back of it. It's pretty easy to remember. Uh, credit card these days are Fraud is basically getting stuff for free. It's the reinvention of, uh, I don't have this, so I'm going to take it from you. Garbage picking. That's always a good way. For anything under about $500, garbage picking works. Carbon copies are probably the best thing that you could get if you want to do credit card fraud. For the main purpose is, is that it has all the information out there. It's like a global picture of what you are looking at or what you need. You have a name there. Well, that name, after first further research, can lead to your objective. However, what we're going to do right now is someone give me an online store, something that they've always wanted, anything, within a reasonable amount of money. We're going to choose, we'll choose the Dell 5000 series laptop. Okay, first of all, let's do this. When you log on to Dell, you don't need a username, you don't need a password. You can order the information. Let's just say you ordered CDRW, a DVD, extra battery, the full Monty on everything about it. Next thing, as for the individual's name, address. Two ways you can do this. One, you can get the address of the individual and you can basically intercept that package, have it be through their home or for the business. Second of all, most credit card companies and businesses do talk to each other, people. They do not, they're not silent partners. Credit card, credit card companies do not like to get screwed on stuff, especially the insurance companies. What they'll do is that they'll check the address. They'll call up, they'll check the name, they'll check the address. However, if you call and say, so and so, this is my business. I'm having it sent here, but this is what my local address is and put in a footnote. You will get that product at that address stating it's a business. UPS won't even really care if it's a business or not. It'll have a title right there. It'll say Acme Warehouse Company. It could be run out through your home, preferably not your own. Now, to order this, Second of all, you can have, do multiple credit cards. If you're really lucky and you happen to get a person that's really stupid, that has about three or four high price credit cards, have to be through Capital One. Usually, Capital One is the best if you want to get what you want. You can tell between a debit card and a regular credit card, that means Washington Mutual, Wells Fargo, yada, yada, yada. 
Debit cards have a limited shelf life for the main reason is that they're mostly broke, just like me, I'm a college student. So that point is, you can pick and choose, just remember what you're ordering. If you're gonna order a $5,000 laptop with a debit card, it's not gonna happen. There's just no way in hell that you're gonna get this. However, if you use some Discover card or Visa, MasterCard, something that happens to have a high price limit that you know has a high price limit, then the chances are that you're going to get it. Now, you can do this. For the Dell laptop, you can actually put multiple credit card numbers into there. And at that point, it's exactly the same if you're putting one, except that your chances are decreasing that you're gonna get caught and the product is going to come with you, come to you in one piece. Now, here's another pointer. For those of you that like your product within next day air or same day air, no. That's mainly what credit card theft, what they look for. They look for the quickest possible route. If you do your homework correctly in the way I explain it to you, you'll do fine. Now, okay, back up here. We ordered the laptop, that's fine. However, they need some information. They need some communication device. They need some way of trusting you. One way to do that is through email address. Now, mostly, if you use AOL, no. Use some private, public, free, email, have it be Hotmail or Yahoo. Go create an email address that happens to be reasonable to the person's name. Use their full name, first letter. Don't do anything fancy. If you use the simplest route, you're usually gonna be right about it. Use, let's say, R. Jones 69 and do something like that at Hotmail.com. Put all the information in that you know, happen to know of. Address, birth date, telephone number. Make everything accountable and acceptable. As in, they go back and check it, they'll see this information is correct. This person must be trying to scam us. A person that happened to have a credit card, not you. Second of all, when you happen to order this, it would be good if you happen to have a telephone that was besides theirs. You can put their home address one. If you put their business one during the daytime, they usually have a little place where you can call, call between these and these times. Usually for Dell, they'll call between the daytime. Usually around 12 to about 4 p.m. business hours. That's the best time. So get a phone where, like a friend's phone or someone that you really hate and you can tap into their phone line. That's usually the best line to do it. Now, you got it ordered, your information is correct. Okay, what's next? Location. Let's start off with, let's say if I'm incredibly sleazy and I'm going to screw over someone's life completely. I'm gonna use someone's home. Now I'm not gonna use my own, my own home. That's cardinal rule number one. Never send it to your own home. Ever, ever, ever. That's, that's script newbie kit right there. Two, if you're gonna send it to someone else's home. First, you can send it to your friends, that's completely fine. Just make sure, one, you don't mind losing that friend if that ever happens, if they come back and say, well, this was sent at your home. Are they gonna care? Or do you really want to keep that friend? Second of all, someone that you hate, that's usually a good thing. If it's someone that you hate, you have the tracking number. You have all the information, they don't. You can go there intercept the package and get it and they won't know the wiser and when it finally comes around that this was their credit card theft, they're gonna go to that home, realize package isn't there. I never signed for it. If you do have to sign for it, sign it, scribble a name, scribble the name that was on the package. UPS have a very short term memory. They do approximately 50 to 100 shipments per day. They're not gonna remember one face for one package about seven days later. They'll remember the address. They won't really remember a face if it costs for an ID. Okay, now let's just say we got the laptop. That's good and dandy. Let's move on to phase two. Let's move on to something a little bit smaller. Let's just say an Omega watch. It's a little bit cheaper. It's about $1,500 if you're medium price for it. Now, let's just say we don't have a carbon copy. We didn't go trashing. We couldn't get a number that way. 
What other ways are there? Well, first of all, if you ever realize that some restaurants still print all of the credit card number on the receipt, even though it's against the law. Now, that's stupid. They print the number, they print the expiration date, and they even print the guy's name fully for you, if you can believe that. That's one way of doing it. You won't have a personal identification number, but you really won't need it anyway. The only research that you'll need to do is tracking down who he is. If it happens to be in San Francisco, that's going to be a little bit harder, but if for a small town, you can, depending on your resources, get it to some extent correct. Hopefully, there's not any large numbers for the person that you happen to swipe their credit card. Through try Home Base, Home Depot. You'd be surprised that when you make a deposit for different tools, different merchandise, happens to be excuse me, over about $500,000, you actually need to give a credit card number, your name, expiration date, everything. Even your personal identification number on the back, they do take. Now, first of all, they print a receipt. Second of all, they write it on a piece of paper. Now, they also stick this in a place that where it is accessible to you and I, the average Joe. Now, you can get it that way. That's another way of doing it. Third way is what I call the up close and personal rule. The up close and personal rule is you happen to see a credit card laying on table, you happen to be a place, some place uh, you're a guest, something like that. You don't like the individual or you just need a credit card. You can look at the number and if your memory's good or if you're a quick writer, you can write down the number, look in the back, write down the expiration date and the personal identification number, I'm sorry, on the front and the name, the address, phone number you already have because you were at the place of the residence. That's very, that's probably the best way that you can get away with a credit card number and usually no one will be the wiser. There is a fourth way and that's the old fashioned way of hacking which I'm not going to tell anyone how to do here because then I will be in real big trouble but I will tell anyone after this session on how to do it. Especially for American Express cards. Hey, there are certain items that you can get. One is about $5,000, maybe $6,000. Do not go for anything about $10,000 or more. This is not the March of Dimes. This is not Goodwill where you'll be easily able to get this. This is items like watch, CDs, mini discs, uh, mini disc player, anything. Now, there are a good couple of sites you guys might want to take a look at, one of which I think you'll enjoy. Microsoft, you can easily get it. Costco.com, Circuit City, Walmart, any computer place that has happened to have computer software, computer hardware, even merchandise, jewelry, stuff like that, that are online, do not have the safest credit card protections. If you can even believe this, even DEF CON has got scanned about $2,000 in credit card theft through people like you, and I'm not the only person that's heard about this, for t-shirts, for everything. Now, I'll give you some items that you can order and cannot order. Okay, let's use this. You can watch people order Okay, we'll use Costco.com example. Costco.com, you can basically order anything there. The only thing that you're going to need to worry about is the mailing address because they will check that and that is their main source for identification. For Circuit City, for CompUSA, for a lot of other stores, they only check the name, their expiration date, make sure everything lines up. They do not check the address. The address as of this point is almost a sheer proof way without saying that you are a credit card or you are not a credit card thief. Items do not get, let's see, jukeboxes, handguns, explosives, chemicals, you know, things that would be hazardous that would sort of tip the eyes off the FBI that I'm, I'm ordering nitroglycerin through a New Jersey chemical factory. That's not the best way to get people's attention. 
Now, if you order a CD player, that's a little bit better. That's not blowing up a federal building, and they're not going to really care about that. If the item is 5000 or less, most times you're not going to get hassled by it for the mere fact that the insurance companies will cover it. If it's over that and you happen to get really risky, and uh, like I have, and you happen to order something above $5,000, there is a chance that there will be an investigation for that particular item. Now, let's see. The significance of what you are doing is dangerous. There are police officers out there that spend their entire lives tracking people like us down. Now, there are, I'll give you an instance that I was just told while I was at DEF CON. An individual, he was good, he did credit card thieving. However, he ordered it through stores that were locally, and then he picked them up. What's wrong with this picture? First of all, you're using personal identification. You ordered it. That's fine, they're gonna check it. However, you have to come pick it up. No, you have someone else pick it up. You go hire some lackey that happens to be at the park or something, give him a 20 and say, can you go pick this up for me? He doesn't know you, he doesn't know anything about you, he doesn't know your name. All you know and all he knows is that you gave him an Andrew Jackson to go do a small little deed. That's as far as you need to go. Do not do personal pickups because if by chance, that credit card item happened to be checked, credit card company calls that individual, individual says, I never ordered something like that. Next thing they know is when you come pick up the item, you will be arrested. And depending on the item, this individual ordered $5,000 worth of stuff. He is going to get about three to five years, no probation, and he is over 21. So at that point, it is a risky business. But how much is enough? In most cases, it is the best way to do it locally, unless you have friends out there and businesses. If you have happen to have like a secretary, ex-girlfriend, something like that in a far town that you can use, what you can do <coughs> is that you can actually fake the name. It is possible to change the name of the credit card and have it used. What it is is that uh, ironically, if it's for a business usage, the name is bypassed when checking. All it is checked is the credit card number. For some reason, credit card companies feel that your business, uh, you're not going to do something like this. Only personal usage is checked. So, let's just say we order $250 of worth of merchandise at some anonymous store. And I ch actually change the name from the billing to the shipping. So we have Jane Doe that's going to be billed for it. However, we have Roger Hamilton that's being sent to. That's pickup number one. Most credit card companies would question that. However, they're going to first call. Now, if they happen to call the business and the business says, yes, Mr. Hamilton is here. However, he's in a meeting and we'd like to take a message. That right there, they're not gonna check it. Just one of those things that stupidity allows. Now, that's fine and dandy. Second thing, you, if it's even better that your friend happens to be secretary, she can sign for it. And case in point right there, you're off the hook. She signed for it. As far as she knows, Roger Hamilton ordered it. Quite stupid. It works. Once that's ordered, she can send it to you, or you can basically go pick it up. End of story. Okay, cardinal rule. First of all, don't send it to your home. Send them all. Once you order that item and you send it to whatever address, do not use that address again. Don't even look at it as a possible location. It's just not going to happen. First time's lucky. Second time, they're going to start to be a little suspicious when some road down there is starting to receive packages every week from different companies. It's not a good thing. Okay, there's two types of internets that people can order. One is internet based and one is land based, internet based. Internet, you're most likely going to get scot free on it. Land based, they're used to the security and the security will be a little bit tighter. 
heaven forbid, I'm no, I know I'm going to say this, I know I'm going to burn in hell someday for saying this. You can use the resources of AOL that has god-awful how many internet sites that you can order stuff from that have the most lax security you have ever seen for credit card theft. I know I've done some consulting for them. It's sad on how easy you can get away with credit card theft. Now, if you do a land-based, be aware that there's two ways. One, if you happen to order it through a land-based internet, you can have it sent to their store in your town, and then that store can send it to an address. Now, if that store sends it to an address, they are not going to check the address that's on the credit card. So right there, you can use the store as a pond to send it off. And it's really no matter right there about the address, have it be for business or personal usage. For higher yield stores that are land-based, you need to be aware of that their profit margin. If you happen to rip off Circuit City, that's fine. They're not going to really give a crap. However, if it's a land-based internet, have it be for your average Joe store that happens to have a web page on there. That's not going to happen right there because they're going to feel you just screwed them out of so much amount of money and they're not going to realize about the insurance or anything like that. Now, you need to be aware of for insurance, if theoretically someone took someone else's credit card, they're only liable for the first $50 of that item. So in a sense, if I happen to rip off their credit card, it's only $50 in their hole. Now, most people don't know that. And if they don't, then they need to do a little contracting work for that to actually find out information regarding that. So let's do a little example if I can actually get this to work. Go figure to send me an over. Ah, uh, fuck it. I know. We're just going to do this the fun way. We're going to use someone, someone at Average Joe's credit card number, and we're actually going to attemptfully order it. have some fun with some people today. Anyone wants, I do have a you know, private collection. Okay, let's use Mr. Donner Jones here. Donner Jones has this number and they have this number right here. Now, my regretfulness to tell you is that for personal identification numbers, they can be in the form of 787 or they can be 4211. The four-digit numbers are more secure. You can realize that if you have a four-digit number, the more likelihood of you being researched and having an investigation put on you will be higher. If it's three-digit numbers, the likelihood of anything happening to you is zero to none. Now, how you can tell that? MasterCard and Visa really rely on insurance companies. If you happen to may rely on American Express, maybe Discover sometimes, their likelihood of you, they actually in, uh, starting an investigation is high because they don't like to get screwed over. That's 
you're going to do American Express, just be aware of the consequences a little bit more than usual. Now, we have Mr. Donner Jones here. First thing we're going to do is let's use Hotmail. And for Mr. Donner Jones, let's give him, let's just say, Jones 46. Put a DM for that. Mr. Donner Jones 46. Now, do not do this from your own computer. Do not do this from a friend's computer, not one that you care about. Go to a library. Go to a place where it has public computer access. Now, here's a couple points why you want to do this. Maybe over paranoia. When you happen to do this, Hotmail, Yahoo, they send a little cookie to that computer. That little cookie remembers the username and password. Now, if an investigation were to come back, they find that computer, let's just say, in your possession, in your home, and they go back saying, oh, they have a cookie from Mr. Donner Jones on your lab laptop or on your computer. How did you get that? That's a pretty big gimme right there that you did the crime. So do it from someone else's computer you don't like, or do it from a library, or even a college, like some university that happens to have library access or a lab access that you can easily get into. That's the best way to do it. Second thing is, Okay, we're going to oh let's fuck over Circuit City today. I'm in a really bad mood. Circuit City, let's order let's order a Palm Pilot 7X. Now, Mr. Donner Jones happens to have a Capital One card. Now, for Capital One, let's make this, and I know I said this. Yeah. Go figure a switch. Let's make this a four. Four right there. You can first tell right there. That's going to be a Visa. Now, if it's a five, like I said, it was going to be a MasterCard. Now, Visa is probably the most preferable one to use. So, okay, we have a Visa now. We're going to set the expiration date as 0103. Personal identification number is null and void. You really don't need it at all. Now, we're going to do all the information for the email. We know where he lives. We know his phone number. If not, make one up. For the e you just want to make the email as realistic as possible if they happen to go back to that email address. So, we have Donner Jones 46 at hotmail.com, and we're going to order a Palm 7X. So now, we do this. We order it. It asks us for the address. Let's send this to a supposed business. Now, if we happen to live, let's just say in Klamath, Oregon. I'm going to send this to the Klamath, Oregon, and I would happen to live in a city in California that happens to be right on the border. What we're going to do is we're going to say for Klamath, Oregon, that this is a automotive department a small mom and pop store right there. Send it there. On a footnote, there's always comments. Or what you can do is you can call. That's even better. You can call and say that this is my address, which you would know. And same thing is, is that I realize that this address is not my shipping address. It's just my billing. But this is my business, and this is a really important item to me. Play the sympathetic, stupid type. It works with these people. Male or female, I don't care what the anarchist cookbook tell you. There are some really smart females out there that you cannot con. There's some really stupid males out there that you can really screw over if you happen to talk to them. So just remember that. That sex really does not matter when you talk to an individual. It's... If you happen to get the particular stereotypic woman, old, maybe 40s or 50s, that's been doing this for a while, if you're really nice to her, do everything by the book, you say thank you, you say ma'am, you say everything else that would happen to be a polite gentleman usage, nothing is going to be suspected. However, if you're an asswipe and you happen to piss her off, she's going to suspect something is wrong and she's not going to really go for anything. So, 
We send this to Klamath. That's fine. It's a business. Let's call it Donner Automotive Department Store. Anything like that. That's fine. Okay. At that point, it's going to say UPS Ground. So there is two days overnight. There's three days overnight. There's just regular UPS Ground. Let's sit at UPS Ground. That's going to take about seven to ten days to get to you. I'm not going to really worry about a Palm 7 X PDA that's going to be $300, $350 and have the credit card company run it like that. If it's over $1,000, they usually do a priority run on it. If it's less than that, it gets put into the end of data box where it could take five days, it could take 10 days, depending on how filled this is. If you do it during Christmas, Ooh, that's like the best time of the year, and you thought Santa Claus was nice to everyone. Now you send this to there, you get it. Now what? Options you can come up with. One, you can say, you can play Mr. Donner. Let's just say Mr. Donner. I'm calling up UPS, and I'm going to say that I never ordered this, that... I don't know who this is, et cetera, et cetera. And you say that you never ordered this product. UPS is fine. They say, well, go pick up the item. However, when they come next day, the box is open. There's nothing in there. Oh, I'm sorry. Someone must have stole it before I left for work. Oh, that's so unfortunate. That's always good. Now, that is if you had to sign for the item. And if you had to sign for the item, just say leave it by door, etc. Like that, if it happens to be a business. Now, if you have to sign for it, and it's actually an automotive parts store, camp out there. Find out what the routine is. Do your homework. This is not your average blow Joe way of credit card theft. You need to do your own research in this environment. It's a hostile world, and there are a lot of shocks out there that would love to butt your head off. Do your research and find out if you are going to pull a stunt like this, find out what their hours are, what their routines are, when their lunch hour is. You have the tracking number. Find out what time is going to be there. You can do delayed tracking. You can say, have this package delivered at such and such a time. FedEx is going to deliver it. That's even better. Let's call them up saying, I like it delivered like between one and three of that particular day and they'll make arrangements for you. It's really easy to get bypass people. Now, let's just say there's someone there for Donna Jones and this department store, automotive store, but you need to sign for it. So, a couple options you can do. One, UPS is usually going to pull up there and if it's automotive department store, <laughs> This is a really cool thing. You could probably, if you plan this in advance, get a job there. And usually the gruntiest people sign for the packages for shipping and receiving. That's one way. Another way, if for the Donner Jones place, if happens to be one of those days where it happens really slow and you happen to know the routine at a store where the UPS guy comes in, doesn't really pay attention, and he just signs the stuff off to whoever's there, leaves, that's fine. Just walk in there, act like your employee. Hey, UPS guy, I'll sign for that. Oh, okay. And he'll leave. No harm, no foul, and get the hell out of there as quickly as you possibly can. Now, if he's going to drop it off, what you can do is that if it happens to be one of those places where it happens to close that day, what you can do is you can stand outside there, act like it's open, UPS comes by, and you receive the items in hand. UPS goes, you go. Now let's use something a little bit more advanced. Let's say... Hmm. Okay. I need to come up with a really good item to steal for a scenario. What does someone really want? A what? 
Okay, let's do this. I'll go for that. A new guitar. We're going to screw over Costco.com because that's where they're selling it. And I took a look and they have them there. So we're going to order a new guitar. Let's come up with a... Let's just say... By the way, consecutive numbers do happen to pop up on credit cards. Okay, we are going to order a guitar, just by the way for expiration dates, you can usually tell it's going to be a one odd number sometimes depending on the credit card manufacturer, so we'll make this 05 slash 04, and let's make this, oh, we're going to... Mm, hell, let's make it a capital one. Why I, why I write capital one is for a very important reason. One, sometimes if you happen to have a bad day and you call someone, they will ask for the bank for which issued a card besides the billing address. Billing address is a plus, but they will sometimes ask for the card person that actually authorized it and be Capital One, have it be Washington Mutual, have it be Wells Fargo. This is a really important thing. They'll say, well, look behind your card and they'll actually display a logo of who issued it. Sometimes it could just be Visa. So let's order a guitar, okay? Guitar, oh, let's be generous. It's going to cost $700. Now for this account, let's make it at Linda H, but let's do this at Yahoo.com. Now Linda doesn't have any idea whatsoever that you're scamming her credit card. You happen to pick this credit card up Well, she was in Macy's. You happen to intercept her carbon copy by some means. Have it be through garbage. Have it be that sh the salesperson dropped it on the floor or she was giving it to her and she never picked it up. Have it be a number of things. But you happen to have a carbon copy and this is the shelf life. This is the amount of time you have to exploit this credit card. This is probably the most important fact. Now, if you come to a shelf life, it happens to be, let's say, say this year and I'm a month away and you're about to burn $700, don't. Do not even try and risk something that large when the expiration date is up in one month. That's a sure sign for any consultant or for credit card person that happens to be in a security firm that that is credit card theft. Besides that, there's one other way to tell, I might as well give this up now, that if this person is a good person, like orders a lot of stuff for UPS all the time through credit cards, that's fine. But if this is some old woman that you're scamming, she's never ordered anything on the internet in her life, and you just ordered a $700 guitar, that they're going to check out and find out her history. If she just ordered a brand new guitar, never ordered anything in her entire life, it's going to look a little bit suspicious. So choose your targets well. I know credit cards are far and few between, but please use a little common sense when you do this. Okay, I'm going to go through Costco.com. Now, two options you have ahead for you. Costco.com has this ambiguous and really ironic twist of fate. You can order something, have it be... They print out a receipt like that. You can actually return it and get the money if you did not want the guitar. <coughs> Excuse me. You could actually get $700 back if you didn't want the guitar at all. That's one real quick fire way of getting cash on the go. Anyone want a brand new computer instead? Now, for Linda D's, 
we're going to give, we'll make this scenario all up so that Linda Lee's spends on average about $200 on the internet per month. That's I, I PM for all you people out there. Now, for $200 per month, if a credit card company goes around and says, oh, we're ordering $700 and it's for one item and it happens to be a guitar, they're not going to really suspect anything for that. Now, for Costco.com, you really do not need to have a membership card. You don't need to have anything like that. If In truth, it's better that you do not have a card whatsoever for Costco.com. Do not put any information of your own onto this. Prosecuting credit card theft with no information of your own on it, as in no name, no birth date from you, nothing whatsoever, is like a haystack and no needle at the very, very, very bottom pile. That right there is how you get away with it. Now, as I explained before, for Costco, what they check is for billing address. So what we are going to do is we're going to change things around. There will be no business. You do not have access to any resources that will allow you to send this. You don't have any ex-girlfriends happen to be secretaries. You don't know anyone whatsoever. This is going to be your first time scamming a credit card. So what we're going to do is we're going to send it to her home. Well, guess what? You are going to have the tracking number. You are going to have access to find out when it's going to be there. And if you are smart enough, you know her daily schedule. So if she's a 8 to 6 individual, as in she works in a bank, then you have free reign to her house to be there, to stand outside. Just say you're a gardener. Bring some tools out. Just say that she just hired you. I don't care. Make, be original. <laughs> So, you have all those things. UPS happens to come by. UPS says there's a signature there, are required, and it usually is for a $700 item. That's about $500 is the limit for signatures. $700 and up, that usually is uh, as a gimme for signatures. So, let's just say you're a gardener there, your personal gardener. You are mowing the lawn, UPS happens to come up say is, well, I can't leave this here and I need a signature. Well, I'll sign for it and I'll make sure that the lady house happens to get it. UPS will usually say yes if you happen to clean cut, average looking, and there happens to be a door window or gate, you know, accessible where he can see that you have some sort of access to the house, as in that person that had us of that house gave or is entrusting you to some extent. Now, I'm not encouraging everyone to break into a house and open up a door and say, oh yeah, she let me into the house. Yeah, no. Breaking and entering is not cool. This is credit card theft. You're already in deep as it is. So, <laughs> just open up a gate, have some tools lying around, UPS comes by, big box right here, and, okay, sign for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scribble a name. Don't put your own. Don't, don't. Bad, bad. Stupid motherfucker. Don't put your goddamn name on there. Don't put any personal information. If you anything, dress up a little bit. Put a mustache. Comb your hair. Don't put your average looks when you're doing something like this. It's one of the things that you really get caught up on. Be different. Now you have the guitar. Hey, fast forward about, took seven days to order. You received on day eight. Two days later, for Linda Ninzi, she happens to get a phone call saying is, for customer satisfaction through Costco or something. They say, were you satisfied with the product? Were you this, this, and that? 
saying, what? What are you talking about? I never ordered anything. Well, ma'am, you ordered a guitar that was $700. Well, no, I didn't. Okay, here comes the investigation part that happens to be really fun. One, is your name over anything? No, it's only her name. Her name for the billing, her name for the mailing. Second thing, credit card. It's her name. Expiration date is correct. Number is correct. That's fine. Anything happens, drop the ball. If sometime during this particular event after it, where you feel that it's completely gone, that you're going to get caught, that you feel that you're going to get caught, completely drop it. There is no strings attached to you to actually say that you are going to get caught. And even so, if she happens to come up to you and she has some guessing that you stole her credit card. Oh, no, I didn't. Proof. What proof does she have? You got this as a carbon copy by f some chance, if she would even happen to know that. Now, as a carbon copy, destroy it. After copy number, destroy all evidence. Do not keep it for personal propaganda. Do not keep this sort of copy. Oh, you have the carbon copy. Oh, wow. Thank you for providing evidence for us. No. Bad. Don't do something like that. Destroy all evidence. You have the number. You just ordered something. Fine. Destroy all evidence that happens to link you to that particular item that you just ordered. Now, here's another thing for you. If this happens to be a particular event where you can still get caught. Now, I explained to you before for Costco. Costco.com, you can order stuff and then return it. However, Mr. Ms. Lindsay over here happens to be a complete snot and just goes all hell over this. Don't try and return it. Do not try and return something or you will get busted. They will do some means to stall, to at some point just keep you there while they call the police. Next thing you know, you have two nice officers right here handcuffing you. That's not going to be the worst situation. But at that point, it will be a possible situation if you go for the money. Now, I've given you two examples. I'll order, ask any of my private answers for uh, Discovery, for American Express, for any of the other cards now. But does anyone have any questions before I end this? How would you know if she would happen to go for this? One, you can call the company if, and find out if she has or not. Say you're an investigating officer. That's fine. Same thing is, if it happens to be in the neighborhood, you can find out if her mannerisms happen to dictate anything. Neighbors talk. You can find out if, oh yeah, gossip around. I guess got credit card theft. That's one right, right there. That meant there are a number of solutions. I'm give, just giving you some very easy, plausible ones. Yeah. Usually, let me see if I understand this. If they have, huh? Usually, for most companies, if it's been the first time offense or second time offense, they will just refund the entire amount and not charge you the $50. If this has been a recurring occurrence, as in you got screwed over and over again by some means, they will start charging you $50. <coughs> or if it's a really stingy company, yeah, they'll just charge you the $50 and not worry about anything. Yeah, you and the hat. You don't. It's up close and personal. That's the one bitch about the credit card. The identification is assigned to each card automatically, and the randomization for that three-digit number is you're going to have to pull it back of the card. That's a surefire way to actually get it. Now, let's take... That's on the back of the card. That has to be up close and personal. Now, let's just say you wanted money from... Oh, let's go through... Western Union. Western Union, you can order money, and on the very last page, they happen to want the three-digit identification number. Now, you can do that. You actually can get money through them. 
you'll just need a couple of items. One is a cool friend, and the second thing is a fake ID that you can have already this, this set up. Now this ID will only work once. So if you happen to send from Dorothy Jones to Ron Rickman, you're Ron Rickman, have an ID already set up. Now that's the pain in the ass of doing it, is getting an ID because they will ask to see this. They will happen to ask for all this information beforehand and they will check the ID. They mainly want to see the name and the face but everything else is secondary, but it's still important. Usually sometimes credit card bills don't come to people. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. The normal person will not receive a credit card bill, and if they do receive a credit card bill, they won't initially look at it. Yes, it is good to have a billing cycle. However, it's not really necessary because in the end, sometime an investigation will be called, but it's, it's timing. It happens to be entirely on the item. California. California is the number one state for restaurants. If you go to a really cheap restaurant and they use a credit card like Baskin Robbins, go to Baskin Robbins in any state and they print the credit card number on there. There's one, sh there's a really good tip for you right there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, my time is up and your next speaker is actually officially on that list. So uh, thank you very much.